Good morning friends, my name is Kirsty Bowden, I am a below the knee amputee and I absolutely love makeup. So today I'm going to talk about um, how I got prepared for my um, elective amputation. It was elective but it wasn't elective but we'll get into that later. I'm going to put makeup on but today I'm not going to talk so much about the makeup, I'll just list it all below on what I'm using and just get on with it and we'll talk more about the amputation. I am looking down into my mirror, so um, if it looks like I'm making no eye contact, it's because <laughs> my mirror is down there. <laughs> right, okay, so I found out um, that amputation was an option um, probably a good maybe six months before my surgery. And it, in New Zealand, we have a... Um, it's basically a government-run um, insurance company called ACC, and the process in New Zealand is that if you've had an accident, which is um, what I did have originally, um, ACC will cover it. Well, they may or may not cover it, but they have, did choose to cover my um, accident originally. And um, then they... Um, Basically, the, the surgeon has to apply to ACC for your amputation and, um, you know, they have to have a compelling story as to why you need to have your amputation. And, what compelling story? Compelling medical reason is probably more accurate. Um, before ACC will approve to pay, you know, to pay for it. Um, so... Um, that takes, oh, for me it took about three months, uh, and I kind of was in a holding bay the whole time um, with that, in that, you know, I couldn't make plans, I couldn't um, sort of, you know, I, I, I work full time, I'm a software developer, and, um, well, I don't work full time at the moment, I'm still recovering from surgeries, but, um, I did work full-time and uh, the I couldn't you know sort of tell my boss about long-term projects that we could or couldn't take on um, because I just didn't know what I was doing uh, and that's that's for somebody who has anxiety which I do have um, I also have PTSD in relation to um, my ankle injury um, so they, I'm a little bit off track. <laughs> I'm not very good at multitasking, am I? Um, so I had to wait for ACC. Eventually they approved the um, amputation, which means basically that everything amputation related, they've got to cover. Got to cover? Yeah, pretty much. So long as there's a medical reason behind it. Um, after that, I kind of realized that I, I had an opportunity that a lot of amputees don't have and that I could get myself prepared for this amputation. Uh, I'm a nerd, nerd, geek, either or, um, and like a perpetual learner. So I accessed as much um, information online that I could about, you know, amputee experiences, what I could expect from the surgery, the recovery. Um, I joined up with the New Zealand Amputee Association and their Facebook page and got um, chatting to other amputees. I very quickly discovered that here in New Zealand there seems to be um, very much a, a kind of sort of like just a lot of older people who are amputees and their life stories and their experiences were quite different from what I was hoping to kind of hear about. There are younger amputees um, and very young amputees but they weren't you know part of the things that we had attended you know the meetings and things like that um, and I found that when I was talking to the older people that their life experiences, they were winding down in their lives. They were wanting to relax and slow down. Um, and at my age, in my on the wrong side of 40, um, I'm actually interested in, in getting more active. And 
um, you know, sort of picking up my life. I've spent, you know, the last 18 years being very limited in the amount of mobility that I could have and the activities that I could take part in. Um, so I sort of, I, whilst a lot of their, um, you know, advice was, you know, a lot of it was really, really good. Um, but yeah, I still, um, found that I wasn't really quite getting, um, the life experiences and information that I wanted to get because I was really, um, wanting to sort of amp it up. So then I, you know, started looking at people on YouTube and I found some, you know, wonderfully inspiring young, young people. <laughs> um, but their, again, their life um, was sort of different from mine. You know, I'm a mum. You know, I've been working since I was 17. I enjoy working. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'm a homeowner with uh, an absolute zoo full of pets. I've got three dogs, three cats and a bird. Um... My children are adults, and I use that term very, very loosely, um, <laughs> and that they don't live at home um, at the moment. And, <laughs> and um, they, you know, so I don't, we don't have to sort of look after them or anything like that, and we're not starting out with a young family. Um, so I sort of, I did online and, you know, really struggle and in person to find people in the same sort of life situation as me um, and, you know, hear about their experiences um, about being an amputee. And I really wanted to do that because I really needed validation that I was making the right decision to get an amputation. Um, I've said in my first video that I had the option to go ahead with further fusion. Now, I had a fusion that worked quite well for quite a long time. Um, and I had the option of, you know, getting you know, more fused, my foot further fused and my leg further fused because the bones were struggling and sort of, you know, falling apart and getting um, arthritis and things in the areas that um, the metal was in, you know, so I was sort of losing, you know, more and more functionality. Um, and because of, you know, like trying to make the decision to have an amputation, <laughs> it was awful. I had nightmares. Um, you constantly second guess your own thoughts, uh, if you're in a lot of pain and I was, you know, heading back into that, that, that place where I was in a lot of pain, um, it's really hard to make decisions when you're already compromised in your mind. Um, I'm not sure if that's quite the right term that I'm looking for, but it fits, it works. Um, so... Yeah, so I kind of realised, oh, back on topic, I realised that I had um, an opportunity that, you know, people who have horrific accidents and wake up with missing limbs, they don't get the opportunity to prepare themselves for that, not mentally, not physically, nothing. Um, whereas an elective, you know, amputee, we have that opportunity if we wish to take it um, and I decided that I needed to take that to make the best outcome happen for me um, with this with the surgery and with this life change um, so for me that took the form of um, I, I got myself a physio and I joined a gym uh, and I'm not the kind of person who's real keen on um, you know, sort of set exercising or really the gym in general. I prefer incidental exercise, so I'd rather be out walking around in the bush or in nature and just, you know, loving life and getting exercise via that. Um, and yes, walking around in the bush is a thing in New Zealand. <laughs> um, we only have to travel five minutes away from our house and we're in access to native bush um and you know 10 minutes and we're at the beach kind of thing so very lucky where we live and although you know it's a couple of islands we're always going to be close to the beach uh, <laughs> um <laughs> that was off track so 
I decided yeah, to get the physio and I went to the gym to work on exercises that would benefit me as an amputee. So weight bearing through my arms. Um, we practiced transferring from one object to another. Um, and we worked a lot on strengthening my hip and my knees, my um, thigh and my remaining full leg. And just, just um, you know, building some muscle tone in the leg that was going to be amputated. But it was very, we were very restricted by the amount of pressure that I could put through that. So it was a lot of, you know, curling exercises versus pushing exercises. Um, and my physio was fantastic. He was so very patient and he was good because he would watch me close enough to see when the pain was starting to fatigue me. So I never got to the point where I was overdoing it. Um, and I recommend if you are going to get a physio before your elective amputa um, amputation that you do ask them to keep that in mind, you know, that you're going to try and push yourself to the absolute limits because you want this amputation to be a success more than anybody else in the world. Um, so sometimes you, you know, with that, you know, we have a tendency to overdo it. Um... And, you know, it's just a quest, really, to get, to get your life back on track. Um, today I'm wearing this winter-defying def um, coloured jersey. So I'm actually going for some sort of more neutral coloured eyes today because I kind of don't want to overwhelm, um, I don't know, anybody who sees me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I got a physio. We worked out twice a week and I had him come to the gym with me once a week um, and he would just you know help me with a new exercise or we would take the you know the exercise that I had already managed to you know get the hang of and you know take it to the next level. Um, the evening of the surgery after the surgery I was able to transfer myself you know from the bed into a wheelchair um, and, you know, my muscles and my body were ready for it. They could totally handle it. Um, I, my sense of balance was a lot better than I had expected it to be as well. So I can only attribute that to the effort that the physio and I put into, you know, going to the gym. I'd also go to his offices and we would work on, you know, core stabilities and balancing um, and just things like that. So that was really good. The other thing that I did to sort of prepare myself for... Um, the surgery and also highly recommend this as, as a big thing is um, I, I saw a psychologist I still do um, but I am the sort of person that you know while the goods while it's going good um, I'm great everything's good and I'm positive and I'm really happy and I will work hard to my you know achieve my goals but if I somehow don't achieve those goals, I find it very difficult to, um, you know, pick myself up sometimes and, you know, keep moving forward. Uh, I do eventually get there, <laughs> but um, I will have a meltdown about things first. Um, I try not to and, you know, part of my process, I guess, before the surgery was to make sure that I had no sort of lingering hang-ups. Now, we didn't address everything. We didn't get time. We had three months. Um, what we did do was, you know, basically come up with some tools to help me um, when I'm wanting to sort of self-sabotage to prevent me, you know, to work, you know, tools to help me sort of move through that quicker and to recognise that what I was doing was self-sabotaging. Um, my own success, my own health, my own, you know, well-being and actually just learning to take um, responsibility for that and um, to take back my power as well regarding that um, because quite often we give our health and well-being into the hands of you know your rehab team your doctors your surgeons um, you know other professionals who seem to be far more in the know than we are um, but the fact is, is that we know our bodies way better than they do. And um, we know whether or not we're 
you know, working to the limits that we can handle or not. Um, and quite often we don't communicate that. Now, I didn't want to be one of those people who was quite well aware that um, I could do more and just not doing it. So that's what I wanted to get, um, you know, just that sort of psychological check-in, you know. Am I in that place where I could be pushing myself harder, but I'm not because I'm afraid of failure, because I'm, you know, I just can't be asked. Um, in my psychology um, sessions, we talked about, you know, well, initially how I got here, um, and then, you know, the feelings that I have about it, and then how to work sort of forward, and the fears that I had that I wanted to address. Um, Post-surgery, the topics have changed, um, the goals have changed, uh, and we work on slightly different things, which I'll talk about in a different video, but we really sort of set me up for as much success as we could, you know, the, the psychologist and I. And I really value um, that input. I really, really valued the um, opportunity to talk to somebody that wasn't emotionally involved with me, um, who could validate the experience for me and the decision for me as well. My thing is that I'm always worried that I'm cre creating drama in my life that I just don't need. Now, when I was younger, I absolutely loved drama. I lived on it. It was fantastic. It was things to gossip about. And if I was bored enough, I would create drama if nobody else was creating it for me. Um, as I've gotten older, drama has become something that I just don't want. <laughs> um, I, you know, feel like quite often my, you know, if we're thinking of like your your energy being in a cup my cup is never all the way full um yet <laughs> I will get there um so I don't really have that extra energy to spend on drama so that was you know one of the things is that you know I don't want to have drama so um can I just make sure that I'm not doing this um imputation because I want drama um or on some level I want attention um but, you know, doctors, they don't chop limbs off just because you want attention. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, I sort of self-doubted quite a lot. And, and it was really complex. Um, a lot of thoughts and feelings that I kind of really couldn't um, put my finger on when I was talking to, you know, just family and friends. Um, my psychologist was able to sort of, you know, draw out, explain um, give context to so yeah that was really really helpful and if you are you know struggling with that decision um, then I do recommend talking to a professional person um, as an option even if it's just once you know even if you um, even if it's just you know if you've got some sort of online access to some sort of support group or something like that somebody who who's not you know too close to the situation and too close to you and can give you some sort of you know Outside in, insight, outside insight, <laughs> say the words properly, um, to, you know, your perspective on what's going on. Um, and in all cases, amputation is terrifying. Um, it, nobody really can prepare you for what it's going to be like. Uh, each person's experience is completely different each person's fears and their, and their life experiences leading up to the amputation are completely different. You know, their perspectives of their body, their health, their society, it all plays a role in what you perceive this is going to play out as. And um, it's important to recognize that. And as a community, it's important that we recognize, oh, don't raise your eyebrows when you're about to, you know, do them. And you're not expecting it because you get stuff all over the place. Um, yeah, so I completely lost track of where I was going with that. <laughs> um, so those are pretty much the biggest things that I did outside of talking to friends and family. Now, it's I found friends and family very, very helpful. I was very lucky in that... 
um, with my injury being so long term, my f- most, well, all of the important friends and family who have been through this journey with me realized that, you know, moving into a life of pain and avoiding the amputation just really wasn't an option for me. Um, I did, unfortunately, have some family members whom I'm not close to, have very little to do with, have um, a really negative reaction to the news. And, um, you know, the only contact that I have with these people was via social media. Um, But their uh, take on it was that I was going to regret the decision for the rest of my life, that I... um, I would pay for it, that I would be ridiculed, you know, it was just, it was a very nasty sort of content of conversation that I had from these people, and it was just so devastating um, to receive that kind of feedback, and I, I'm working on the assumption here that they did it with the best of intent, um, and I'm probably, possibly giving them credit they don't deserve, but we'll go with it anyway, um, but I don't know that, that those people that are giving that kind of feedback have actually stopped to think about um, how the person taking that feedback is going to feel. Uh, and I think if you are in that position where you are being asked for your opinion and you don't agree with that outcome, if you could just try to gently not scare the person out of their decision, um, But somehow, uh, and I'm not a a communication guru or anything like that, but somehow manage, try to find a way to to put it out that, you know, your thoughts, your opinion on the situation is is different and maybe give some good reasons why, you know, don't threaten them with, you know, a lifetime of pain and poor decision making because, come on, you know, who makes good decisions throughout their entire life? (laughs) Not me. Um... But this, this decision, having an amputation, this decision has been a good one. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have had days um, where, and just recently actually, where I have literally just sat here and cried and I've been like, okay, I just want my foot back. I just want, I don't care, just I will go back to being in pain. I don't want to be an amputee anymore. Um, but in the year that I have been an amputee, that has probably happened maybe three times. And quite often it's outside things that have really brought me down that has got me to that place. It's not the amputation so much. It's the, it's working with the limitations that an amputation brings. Um, and other people actually, other people have a huge um, kind of influence for me on, you know, my perception of, of being an amputee too, which is really weird because, you know, they're not amputees. They don't know what it's like. I'm being fitted this week for a new prosthetic, so I will be looking forward to getting up and about again. And today it's a quicker video because I have yoga at 10 o'clock. I work with a lady who comes to my house and pretty much does mostly floor, core sort of strength. Um, she's fantastic. She's just recently started her own YouTube channel, um, with yoga for horse riders. And a lot of the stuff that she covers for horse riders can be used for amputees, you know, because if you're sitting in a chair, um, there's no reason why you can't be getting some exercise to, you know, strengthen your body and calm your mind. And then later on today, um, I'm seeing a dietitian. Um, part of my um, journey has been, you know, with being, I'd like to say it's all the fault of my ankle and my you know, limited mobility, but unfortunately it's not, it's also portion control, but um, I'm on a weight loss journey as well. And um, I mean, that's working out really, really well. And I work with a dietitian just to make sure that I'm getting the right level of nutrients um, and, you know, healthy kind of fibres and foods into my system so my body can continue healing. Uh, you know, getting a, a limb chopped off, it's a mammoth amount of healing that your body has to do. Um, and so a really healthy diet, very varied and, you know, 
just is, is super super important you know just to give your body those you know the tools that it needs to heal properly so that's my makeup look today um my idea of not too bold <laughs> although i suppose it is quite bold um i absolutely love wearing these bright colors on such winter days ah well i should put on some lipstick <laughs> um and yeah so that um i should write what i'm gonna say before i even start these things uh And now my look is done. <laughs> okay. So hopefully in this video I have covered a few things that you can do to help yourself with um, an elective surgery. Start exercising. Start getting your body stronger and ready so that the transition to not having that foot there is just a little bit easier. Um, it can prevent falls. Uh, it will give you a whole lot more confidence in getting out and about and you'll be able to trust your body um, to do the things that you need it to do. Uh, work within your pain limitations and definitely if you can get professional advice um, around the kind of exercises that you should and shouldn't be doing. Um, and yeah, your mental health, you can have um, you know, a fit body, you can be a great person, but if you've got mental things going on and they're holding you back, um, then the success of your amputation is going to be held back as well. It really is a physical and very much a mental game. Um, and working with somebody that you can trust, somebody that is, you know, emotionally distant from you, um, and, you know, has a healthy professional outside perspective, um, about amputations is just super important and you'll benefit hugely from you know any advice and tools that they can give you you know so it's really important to uh, you know just keep giving feedback to your professionals about where you're at and um, letting them you know come up with the tools that suit you come up with the solutions to your problems that actually get you to solving them. Anyway, thank you very much for spending your time with me today. I hope that your day is amazing as you move forward. Um, if you've liked this video, then please consider clicking the like button. And if you'd like to get more of these videos, um, then please consider subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye.